Sigmund Freud showed that religion is based on believing things to be true, that you believe them to be true because you want them to be true. Freud believed that when we're younger we have a father figure and he protects us when we're vulnerable. But as we grow older we're still vulnerable and therefore we come up with some heavenly father who protects us and I think that's what religious believers do. Freud dismisses religion as being illogical and you know having a lack of proof but he's being very hypocritical because his own ideas are, you know they're based firmly on his interpretation, opinion and a confirmatory bias. People use religion as a way to comfort themselves to get through life. I don't feel religion is just something made up because it's a comfort because at many times it can mean being persecuted as well. The brain's a tangible object and it exists in the physical world. So it's governed by the laws of nature, so free will's just an illusion. To say we have no free will is unrealistic. I think that in every day we have a choice to make. Sigmund Freud, the father of psychology. Freud was dead against religion. Religion is comparable to a childhood neurosis. The whole thing is so patently infantile, so foreign to reality. So, what were his grounds for dismissing religion? Rachel summed it up quite nicely. Freud believed that when we're younger we have a father figure and he protects us when we're vulnerable. But as we grow older we're still vulnerable and therefore we come up with some heavenly father who protects us and I think that's what religious believers do. So, Freud was saying that we start out feeling helpless, we look to our earthly parents for comfort and protection. On growing up, we, we continue to want that kind of protection and through what Freud here calls wish fulfilment, we comfort ourselves by believing we have an imaginary heavenly father. Religion is thus to be seen as a childish delusion. Atheism, on the other hand, is grown-up realism. Well, there's undoubtedly something to this line of reasoning. You know, surveys reveal that among those who believe in God, the kind of God you believe in is very much influenced by the kind of earthly father you've had. If he was a strict disciplinarian, then God is seen as a strict disciplinarian. And the opposite is true. If your earthly father was more easygoing, that's how you're going to see God. So clearly one is, to some extent, projecting characteristics onto God. But whether the whole thing is a projection, well, you know, that's, that's another matter. How about the comment made by Alexandra? People use religion as a way to comfort themselves to get through life. And there's a certain amount of truth in that too. You know, it, it is comforting to think that you know, there might be life beyond death. But leading a religious life can also be far from comforting. No, you're called upon to make sacrifices and having to get up in the morning and, and attend acts of worship, fasting, giving heavily to charity and not having sex outside marriage. I don't feel religion is just something made up because it's a comfort because at many times it can mean being persecuted as well. And he's right. You know, there might even be situations where one has to give up one's life. Carl Jung, another leading psychologist. For a time he worked with Freud, but he had a completely different approach. Whereas Freud concentrated mostly on the early years of life and how childhood neuroses could have knock-on effects later, Jung was more interested in the later stages of life and how one was eventually to achieve one's full potential. This he held was a matter of concentrating on those aspects of your personality which, you know, for one reason or another, got neglected. It was all about developing a well-rounded personality, one that at its centre was the God image within us. For Jung, religion, you know, far from being a childish illusion, was at the very core of being a wholesome, mature person. He once wrote, among all my patients in the second half of life, that is to say over 35, it is safe to say that every one of them fell ill because he had lost that which living religions of every age have given to their followers. He once gave a famous TV interview. And did you believe in God? Oh yes, 
Do you now believe in God? Uh, now? Difficult to answer. I know. I, need, I don't need to believe. I know. So there you have it. Two very different views as to the place of religion in the life of the mature person. One of today's severest and best-known critics of religion is the biologist Richard Dawkins. He's introduced the term meme. A meme is an idea or a set of ideas that spreads through society from, from one person to another. Parents passing it on to their children, for example. Bad or harmful memes he likens to a virus, like a flu virus. It spreads and infects otherwise healthy minds. Religion he regards as one of these harmful viruses. He's all for eliminating it and restoring people to their right minds again. It's an arresting way of putting things. But can't the whole idea be turned on its head? You know, after all, anthropologists reliably inform us that most, if not all, ancient civilizations and jungle and, and, and desert tribes, that they all show signs of having been religious. You know, it shows up, for example, in, in the way they bury their dead. It's indications of, of a belief in an afterlife. So one can argue that the natural state for humans is to be religious. What is new is this recent idea of atheism. It's atheism that is spreading. We see, we see this, for example, in, in, in the decline of, of church attendance. So, which is the virus? The virus infecting the natural state of the mind. Religion or atheism? Finally, there is the question of free will. Our mental experience is that we are constantly having to make choices, choices that determine which of you know, several possibilities will actually happen. But we do our thinking with our brain. The brain's a tangible object, and it exists in the physical world. So it's governed by the laws of nature, so free will's just an illusion. That was Alexandra, but Rachel disagreed. To say we have no free will is unrealistic. I think that in every day we have a choice to make. This is the, the famous free will versus determinism problem. How to reconcile the grinding predictability of the brain with the, the mental sense that the future is, is open. It depends on our choice. Nobody likes the idea that we might effectively be nothing more than robots. Robots blindly going through the motions. But whether we like it or not, is it true? No, it, is that what we are? In particular, doesn't this undermine religion? With its emphasis on the idea that we, we have to choose whether to, to love God or, or not that we are to be held responsible for our actions, you know, he heaven or hell. Yes, the, the element of choice is certainly there in, in, in religion, but, but also something else. In the Old Testament, we have God declaring to Jeremiah, before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet. Before he was born? Jeremiah's future as a great prophet already mapped out? And then later on, we have, we have Jesus telling his disciples, You did not choose me, but I chose you. Now, this seems to imply that God has already determined our future. <laughs> it's all very difficult to understand. You know, speaking for myself, I... I don't know what to make of it, frankly. You know, I take it that, that we are, to a large extent, responsible for, for our actions, but um, I don't know, perhaps, perhaps not entirely. So, who do you think provided the, the more accurate assessment of religion? Freud or Jung? Is it helpful to regard 
either religion or atheism as a mental virus? And do we have free will?